Interestingly, the whole economy is organized in, in sectors and certain industries. Um, my favorite example is a street lamp. If you look at a street lamp, somebody's producing it using intelligent shop floor. Somebody has sensors in it, somebody's operating it, um, and then you can connect all these worlds. Um, this goes as far as smart city concepts. So I'm really convinced that IoT cases are not limited to one company or one purpose. Imagine if we're talking about IoT, that's actually something which surrounds you day by day, maybe without noticing it, like a connected car, remote controlling features um, like smart home, the very well-known connected fridge, which tells you when you need to go shopping or does the shopping on its own. In industrial IoT, uh, we're talking about shop floors, we talk about machines, and those are investment goods, um, production, equipment which we need to produce things um, and to conduct processes and that leads to a totally different level of security, reliability, service level agreements um, and so on. So that's the difference. Although this is a very trendy topic and it's on top of mind of decision makers, we started, I would say, in the mid-90s, so more than 20 years ago, because we always had that vision that connecting things um, could change processes and could, could improve processes. And recently, I think it's more the perception which changed. So people really perceive that this is going to change things. In the center of our interest is the customer. And we had to learn and we listened to the customer that um, sometimes competing situation in terms of certain technologies or products is not in the customer's interest. So if we want to serve that interest, um, openness means collaboration, maybe with competitors in some parts as well, means um, to contribute to open platform and it's a key factor to our success to be open and collaborative. So Bühler is a supplier for the food nutrition industry, but also for die casting. What we did with Bühler um, together is to improve really their main part of business, so the processing of food and crops. So as an example, within crops you can have an issue if a corn has aflatoxin, so this is a fungus that is carcinogen. And what we did is with the help of IoT, and you can detect an affected corn and you can sort it out so that you can use the whole batch, so you drive the cost down and in the end you also help with the whole um, food challenge we have not to throw tons of good food away because of two or three affected corns. Bula Insights was developed in partnership with Microsoft to support our customers in their digital transformation journey. But in order to connect all of this, in order to look at it as a system and bring really sustainable change, we needed a partner. And we believe this partnership of Microsoft and Bula together can make a sustainable step change in the way that we look at our food systems worldwide. Festo is a world leading provider for um, automation solutions and technical education and they offer various pneumatic and electrical driving solutions um, for over 300,000 customers worldwide actually. Festo decided to partner with Microsoft for their digital products and it basically allows Festo to collect data from their customer's shop floor and equipment and with that help they gain visibility to um, prevent downtimes and also be more efficient on the production lines. Microsoft bietet uns mit seinem Produktoffering die Möglichkeit, die notwendige Geschwindigkeit zu bekommen, weil wir nicht mehr alles selber machen müssen. Wenn der Kunde jetzt irgendwie mehr Speicherplatz oder mehr Skalierbarkeit benötigt, dann stellt uns das ganz einfach Microsoft zur Verfügung. You might have heard the, the saying, Microsoft builds on trust. So that's one of our guiding principles, how we look for our partners, how we design the partnerships. So security is not only a task in terms of a firewall or a um, single technology to ensure security, it is integrated in the whole process. So the, the highest goal we have is to make sure 
that this is serving the real customer purposes, that the data belongs to the customer. And in terms of compliance, everything um, we do, we do in a manner to make that sure. If you think about, you want to monetize on data, so the question becomes, how do you get access to the data so data needs to be open? One of the key things for Microsoft is that we think in common models for data, and this is one of the first things to go for. Second thing is you now have the open data, but then you want to make sure that it's A, running on standards, and that it is B, running on a reference architecture that is open. And then the third one is, if you think about the culture that you need to embrace, it needs to be open. Being open means that you can bring together an ecosystem across a common set of shared beliefs. Be that open standards, like Industry 4 or OPC Foundation, open source, like our industrial IoT portfolio being entirely open source to provide a reference implementation and example for the partner ecosystem, and also open data. A great example is a scenario that one of our co-founders, BMW Group, effectively has implemented in one of their German plants where they replaced an existing autonomous driving system for in-house logistics inside the factory with a new one which was based entirely on open capabilities. But if you think about where the potential sits, it's not just within the company boundaries, it cuts across these. That means if you start integrating your suppliers and then if you integrate your customers on that one, you come to something which is more or less the horizontal integration into the overall game, which then obviously increases the overall potential. And when it comes to standards, one of the industry standards is OPC UA, which we are really going for and really believe on that one. Microsoft is the world's largest open source contributor to the OPC Foundation. They are, they are providing 10 times more open source than everybody else together. But they are not only delivering open source, they integrated this into their Azure architecture. And so really connecting uh, an asset, a device, a robot uh, to Microsoft Azure takes exactly 10 minutes. And, and then it's done. They are not building their own ecosystem because customers want to have the freedom to sometimes go with this vendor or that vendor. So you need open standards on international standards because they can convince customers with their services, but not locking them into their own ecosystem and customers are bound to that. Nobody wants that any longer. So this is just a fantastic commitment. We are in times of, I think, very big change. Um, that is happening, that is impacting our daily lives, that is uh, impacting our private lives, but also um, our lives in the companies. There are challenges, but in the end there are so many opportunities that lie um, within this. I think what's critically important for the future is the keyword collaboration, um, because the time where everybody wanted to work on his own ecosystem is, is gone. And this is what Microsoft understood together with the OPC Foundation. We are safe feeling like that we are the United Nations of automation. We see adoption worldwide in, in all kinds of branches, in uh, where, for example, Aquino connected complete oil platforms, uh, but also in the discrete manufacturing, uh, for example, the open manufacturing platform is a perfect example. The open manufacturing platform is an alliance of manufacturing people that are trying to solve common problems that every manufacturing company has to solve be it connectivity of existing and old equipment with new scenarios, uh, be it other environments where they bring, have to bring together this wide variety of partners. We effectively are not creating new standards, we're actually leveraging what's already out there and therefore giving feedback, utilizing them and bringing the standards to life is really what OMP is all about. Now we're talking about um, companies using IoT. Just think about digital supply chains or connected ecosystems. What if you could look um, into a supply process all over the certain stages, like suppliers of parts, machine builders, somebody producing a B2C product, and at the very end, the customer. So if you regard this value chain, I mean, the biggest growth is in front of us and not behind us.